Could you give us some background on uh, the climate change debate in Australia at the moment, please? Well, look, we've had a, a very big public battle and debate that's gone on now for a couple of years about the establishment of a price and a limit on carbon uh, in what we call the clean energy future uh, legislation. Uh, some have called the carbon tax because there's a fixed price for three years before it goes to a carbon market. Uh, and unfortunately, it's been a very bitter battle um, and with scare campaigns, a whole range of sorts of claims. Uh, and um, the market was established. It's been up and running now for about 18 months. Uh, we're seeing emissions come down in the covered sectors and we're seeing growth in clean energy. However, the new government has come uh, uh, and one of its policies was to actually repeal the legislation. That legislation uh, went into Parliament uh, early this week as this conference started. Um at this talks, what are the Australians doing? I don't believe they're bringing a minister, is that right? No, and what's highly unusual, actually the first time ever that we don't have an elected representative here at these talks, uh, we have uh, an ambassador, uh, one of the professional diplomats here representing Australia. Um, and so, uh, yes, we've always had a minister or, or a parliamentary secretary at least, and so it's sending a bit of a bad signal here. Um, and what other impacts do you think it might have on the talks, um, a developed country like Australia um, repealing carbon laws or repealing um, uh, legislation to cut carbon? Yeah, look, it's, um, we know it's given a boost to those who are opposing carbon pricing and carbon markets uh, elsewhere. Um, we, we know this is... Uh, are generally affecting uh, the tenor. I mean, I've just arrived here, it's my first day at these talks, but already quite clearly uh, what's happening with other countries like Japan uh, and Canada. Australia's right up there in those that are actually um, sending some bad signals and sending some bad vibes into the talks, if you like. Uh, and then how it's actually uh, exercising its new mandate, uh, we're still seeing the full uh, breadth of that. What do people in Australia back home think of this? Look, it's been very interesting because actually, um, because we had this very uh, bitter debate, attitudes around climate change was forced through the prism of the carbon tax and whether it was a, a lie when it was being introduced. So this is the words that were being used. Uh, we've done a lot of research over time and it's actually showed that we're emerging with the new laws in place. We're emerging and outside of that. Uh, and we've had strong uh, support for uh, uh, acceptance that the climate change is real by about two-thirds of the Australian public. Uh, and for the first time, they were seeing an, um, uh, we're seeing a bounce and increase again in uh, a desire for Australian leadership on climate ambition. But what we're seeing, though, is this government's come to power very much with the sort of the debate of um, 18 months ago uh, firmly in its head and very key uh, to repeal this legislation. So how that all plays out back at home is still uh, a bit of a moving feast, but we, we think they're misjudging the Australian public if they think the Australian public don't care. How do you think it will impact on um, international talks in the long run as we go into 2015, a country like Australia um, not stepping up to the mark? Yeah, well... Um, we, our, we have a range of 5 to 25% below 2,000 levels by 2020. In our view, the Climate Institute's view, the 25% is credible towards the two-degree goal, which is actually in uh, Australia's national interest. We're a country of extreme weather. Um, and um, uh, But by just sticking with the... They the, the appear to have changed the conditions from moving from the 5 to 25, which has been bipartisan throughout all the political battle. Uh, and uh, by signalling that we may only just stick it around that 5%, and we think that, that sends a very bad signal. Um, we're very keen to understand better their conditions for moving uh, beyond that. And they also have a timeline of thinking about whether they might go on that spectrum in 2015 itself and so that might be too late for some of the timelines that are emerging here as well. So Australia, remember back in 1997 for the first Kyoto um, agreement, actually held up the negotiations. We got a special Australia clause. We were one of the few countries under Kyoto to get an increase in pollution. They think they might be able to get away with that again and I think that's other countries need to send a very clear signal. We're not going to let that happen again. Can you see it turning around through force of the Australian public? Look, um, we've just had an election. That's um, uh, when governments then go away and don't think about the Australian public as much. But I think um, uh, we're, we're starting to see. We have a National Day of Action uh, on Saturday, which I think will be an important uh, uh, moment, I guess, uh, for people to be expressing their opinions uh, and, and gathering there. Um, what we're also seeing um, investors, uh, big superannuation funds and others, actually starting to express some concern about that as well. But the business community 
unfortunately is very short-sighted at the moment. So there's a, a number of mixed messages there. So we're not seeing an immediate turn, but next year will be interesting and I think it's a very bad mistake to make uh, if they think the politics of 2014 to 16 will be the same as the politics that we've had. Because there are stories of international action, where there are stories uh, in China and, and what may, may emerge out of uh, these talks, uh, which I think could come as a bit of a rude shock to this government, which actually believes nothing's been happening here in these talks.